Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast here on Boss Rush Games, where we throw up the X. Because we're about to throw down. I am your host, Corey Deary, and alongside me, as always, is the wise Wisconsinite, Mr. Jesse Douglas. Hey, man. How's it going? Oh, 4th of July. Right. This it, was inter- it was an interesting one this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Amongst other things that we were trying to do this weekend, uh, Fourth of July was an interesting one. Let me let me tell you, it was it was Blast. definitely <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how was your fourth, by the way? Uh, it was actually pretty good. We um, we <laughs> really busy this like during this time because I I was. Uh, my work was nice enough to give us a uh, Friday off since the fourth landed on the weekend. Um, they gave us Friday off as well. And so um, we went to a little get together um, with some of my wife's uh, co-workers and we just kind of, kind of just, you know, sat like me and my wife and the kids sat in one area and then, you know, kind of tried to keep our distance and everything and, uh, and, you know, had some great food. And, um, and then after that, uh, the, the people who are hosting the party, uh, did some fireworks and stuff for a whole bunch of like, uh, illegal stuff. Oh, so boy. yeah, <laughs> it, it was fun though. They're, they're, um, the kids enjoyed it, except for our daughter. She's a little bit skittish. She wanted to go into the house and watch them out the window at one point. And so we tried <laughs> tried that. And then I'm like, yeah, well, we can't really see them from here, though. And so then she we went back out, and she just kind of hit off to the side. But um, So, yeah, we did that. And then and then on the actual fourth uh my parents, there's a there's a campsite that's about an hour and a half away from from me and uh, from our house or whatever that like has it's like one of those where a lot of the lots uh, people can rent for the entire year or whatever. Yeah, like it's you know like you're basically it's like a like a trailer like a trailer park kind of situation where where it's like a practically a place that that people can live for the summer. Mm-hmm. um during the winter closes up but so my my parents bought a lot at one at this campsite and um the lot came with like uh like a basically a mobile home it's like a, more of a camper type like mobile home almost yeah. and they just go there basically on the weekends uh all summer and just you know spend their weekends there as much as they can and and so we went and we visited them. We hadn't seen them in a while uh, since uh, May. And so we went and visited them there, and and it was really cool. the uh, the The campsite actually hired um, some people to to put on like a full show, like what you would go see, at, you know, when the cities do fireworks for the whole city to see. Yeah, like they were doing that, like that uh, level of fireworks right right in the the campsite area mm-hmm. um so like they sectioned off a big part and then like all the people the residents and people staying there that wanted to watch them could just kind of crowd around and, and the field that they that they were lighting them from so that was a lot of fun the kids really enjoyed that um and so yeah it's been like fireworks stuff like almost every day that we've been off um which the kids loved but um yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's you know been been a lot of just kind of uh, visiting with people that we haven't seen in a long time or really gotten to uh, you know hang out with in a long time and and uh, just kind of enjoying the days off, enjoying the long weekend as much as we could. So nice. Even that being like ninety degrees or whatever every single day. Yeah. Oh uh, man, is. Oh man, I I just hate I hate <laughs> hot hot weather. Yeah, uh, you probably can't see right now uh, because I'm using the other cam for you to see, but my yeah. face is totally burnt. <laughs> burnt. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I can see like a little tinge of a of a redness to your face. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's red. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we just kind of hung out, and my brother in law cooked hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff, and brought them over, and we just ate that and hung out and didn't didn't really do much. So. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. Just relax and try to relax and just enjoy enjoy, enjoy it. The quiet sometimes or the peaceful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my day yesterday. Uh, my night was pretty eventful. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I don't, man, I don't really know how to talk about last night because we kind of just talked about it last week, but we, uh, look, we had to, we had to, uh, end some relationships last, uh, this weekend and without getting super into it right now. Right. Uh, I do want to just apologize to Ray, uh, Ray, uh, specifically for some things that went down, uh, and Megan, you know, that there's been some, um, not so nice things happening. If you follow us on, <laughs> on Twitter, you probably have seen it. Uh, but yeah. you know, I, I just want to reiterate that our message is to be better. And, uh, some, some working relationships we had, were not encouraging that behavior and we had to end them. So, um, I just want to apologize to them specifically. Uh, and you know, Deshaun to a greater extent, you know, uh, mm-hmm. which was nice to see him back <laughs> in our group chat. Yeah. Uh, because some things happened and he left social media for a while and he came back, which was nice to see him. But, uh, yeah. you know, I just, I don't want to spend like an hour talking about this like we did last week, but yeah, you know, I, our message is to be better. And if we have to sever business relationships with certain people, um, that's what we have to do. So I, I do apologize to, to Ray and to Megan and to Deshaun for certain things. And I, like, I was embarrassed and, and really sad last night to be a hundred percent honest. Um, so, you know, it, I get it. Some things won't work out how you want them to, but, um, that's, that's how it goes. And, uh, you know, I, I can't be sorry enough for the things that were said and things that happened. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I, think. I, I don't know if you want to say anything, Jesse, but I mean, um, we do, do want to talk about Xbox a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, I think we've gone over things and like, you know, like you said, the best we can do is just, you know, stay true to, to what, you know, what we're, what we've been saying. Mm-hmm. and uh you know making taking actions the way that we we feel need to be taken you know yeah so um, yeah not, a, not not honestly a whole lot more to say about it than that i think you know yeah yeah it just it doesn't take a lot of effort to be a better human being uh i don't yeah. think uh, some people it seems to be harder than others so well you know and like some some of some of the people were that you know that have been helping out and doing stuff and you know and been a tremendous help with things like Deshaun and and Megan you know like like you especially you and Ad you know you like you guys know have known them for for quite a long time you know much longer even than I've known them and you know like it, it just the thing is, is you gotta, you just gotta assess the situations and, you know, it's when you've got people that are coming in that are, you know, like aren't that don't, we don't really know that well, unfortunately, you know, sometimes things, you know, relationships or whatever, aren't going to work out or, you know, business relationships or, but, you know, like you just gotta, just gotta, you know, a, a situation of, you know, yeah. people that don't, don't know you or you don't know them that well, Yeah, you just, you just kind of can't, there's just some things you just can't say and do without 
really knowing a person, you know, well and things like that. And, you know, that's, that's just something that, that people got to try to remember. And, I, you know, and I, I'm sure I've been guilty of it. And I mean, everyone, like mm-hmm. for that matter, I mean, when you're talking with people on Facebook and, you know, and things like that, where people want to be negative and say things and, you know, and you don't really, a lot of times, some of the people that you're getting into a, you know, fight or conflict with, you don't really even know, you know, I've definitely tried to, tried to not interact (laughs) with people as much on, on uh, Facebook and stuff. Yeah. Though I do have family members who make it way too easy. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, I get it. I just, you know, I, I, if we're, if, I mean, the only reason why I'm on Facebook is because of certain family members and because of Mm -hmm. our podcast, right? That, yeah, that's literally the only reason, right? I mean, yeah, the people I'm closest to, right? Like my wife literally sits next to me on the couch every night. I don't need Facebook to contact her. You know, my parents are on Facebook. I don't need to contact them. Right. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Um, and a lot of people I'm related to make it awfully easy to want to quit Facebook. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Um, so I know, I know your pain there, but, uh, yeah, well, and the, you know, and the thing is too, like for me, uh, I, I, I tend to not say something or like, you know, like when it comes to politics, a lot of times I do, yes, I do post political things occasionally, but you know, if I'm seeing ignorance or whatever, I try to just ignore stuff, but like lately, you know, with all the Black Lives Matter stuff and, and, you know, things like that, that I'm trying to not only learn, you know, more about things and stuff like that, but also not just be quiet about it. Yeah. And so like that, honestly, that's what it's been for me is a lot of, uh, you know, if, if you know, people want to be ignorant about stuff, I'm, like not not afraid to call them out on it yeah and And, you know unfortunately we had to do that a lot of that this weekend so yeah um across the board you know and yeah so you know it's i feel like there you know there is unfortunately there there's some good things about being on facebook and you know and and social media in general Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's it's a it's a thin line at times mm-hmm. between between the two things. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, so you know, like I think we're you know everyone's doing a good job of just trying to trying to process everything and and learn from it and move forward. You know. Yeah. So, um, just a quick reminder. Uh, bullying is bad uh harassment of any kind is bad uh <laughs> so just don't do it <laughs> just yeah just don't do it um so the old saying if you don't have anything nice to say just don't say anything at all right like man so um i just wanted to get that out of the way um because i feel like now more than ever it still needs to be said uh so um Anyways, uh, a little housekeeping for you guys just to catch you guys up. We are moving around some dates the way that shows appear on your on your podcast feeds and on YouTube. Uh, recording dates are still going to remain the same for the time being. Um, but we're going to try to get all of our shows posted during the week and not on the weekends. So um, Boss Rush will stay on Monday. Nintendo Power Block is moving to Tuesday. Arsenal X will stay on Wednesday. Tower Casuals is moving to Thursday, and One v One is moving to Fridays. So, um, just to let everybody know that is starting this week. Uh, I know a lot of people may or may not listen to everything we do, which is fine. You know, not everything's for everybody, but just wanted to update everybody on what shows are coming out, what days. And that also is going to allow us to bring pod clips back, uh, which I know a lot of people 
at, at least that consume our YouTube content have been kind of asking for because um, our podcasts are a little long sometimes and sometimes people don't have a lot of time to listen to the whole thing, especially if they're watching at work or something or they just have a specific subject they want to listen to. Um, so that's going to allow us to bring that back probably in the next two weeks we're going to start bringing that back so uh you can look out for that as well also uh we are planning soon to bring back what's on game pass and the retro game show and indie Masterclass. so those three kind of supplemental shows will be coming back as well um in a weird and not a weird a different type of format i mean what's on game pass will probably say the same but mm-hmm. the retro game show is something that ed and i have been wanting to bring back for a while mm-hmm. And I know we want to kind of get Celeste more involved with the indie scene and, and maybe some Zelda stuff. So, yeah, you know, it's 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 coming. We just uh, we've had a lot to do the last couple of weeks and uh, moving stuff around and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so um, I'm trying to give all of our main podcasts a supplemental YouTube show. Uh, and uh, I know that Josh Finney who is uh, helping me with the Destiny show, mm-hmm. um, wants to do some lore stuff with Destiny, so that might be coming sooner than later as well. Um, but yeah, just a, just a little heads up for that. And uh, yeah. Also, moving all of our stuff to Twitch has been a <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, well, I, I was wondering about that. So, can you can you like move stuff that you've streamed somewhere else on the on the on the, to Mixer or I mean to uh, Twitch? Uh, what do you mean, like something that you stream to Mixer? Can you move it? to yeah. Twitch? Yeah, yeah. I wonder, do they have some form like a way that you can upload videos in there? That? I think I think there is. Maybe only with Pro though. I mm, I don't know. I think you can do it regular um i think pro just lets you kind of like i think it gives you one free sub and uh allows you to skip ads i think it's what pro does okay so yeah because i was because i was i uh i finished um streaming and i played through uh um, condemned and and but most of my my playthroughs uh parts of it are all on mixer (laughs) we're all on mixer yeah so um i think there's a way to do that i'll i'll look into it yeah i just figured like yeah if if you knew off the top of your head whether it was something you could do because i would like to do that but at the same time it's it's not a big deal if i can't because i'm i'm uh i'm trying to think of trying to figure out what what i'm gonna stream next Mm -hmm. Um, because I do want to just kind of, I think, try to do, like, stream as much as I can and just pick, like, games like that 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 aren't, like, super long um, and just do, like, the campaigns of them or whatever and stream them. Yeah. Like, um, because I'll be honest, like, I've been really tempted to go back to the Modern Warfare uh, remake uh campaign again because it was so good and play through that and stream it because that that was a it's such a good story and and so well done um i don't know because yeah like because unfortunately i had to go the cheap route and i and it was cheaper to buy um okami on on uh on switch so i have so i have that game on switch because i had thought about possibly streaming that while i play it yeah but but I I don't have that option though with Switch, so I, I'll, which is fine because I wanna I wanna you know focus on Okami to finish it for for uh, book club, but at the same time I wanna make sure that I'm still playing some other stuff that I you know want to play or whatever. So. Yeah, this the streaming stuff is kind of like I don't know. I'm trying to find a balance of what I should stream and which channel to stream it to. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah there's that uh so i don't know well, I, uh, yeah i mean i i think i don't know it's hard to say like i was i was thinking like it's almost i think it would almost be like good for for you to stream like games and stuff you're playing on your personal one 
mm-hmm. and then just save the like the show thing for. But I, I mean, that's I, ultimately I don't think it really matters too much. Well, I think it's just, Nintendo Nintendo Power Block, Boss Rush, and Arsenal X are all going to be streamed to Boss Rush, Boss Rush's oh, channel okay. for sure. Okay. Um, okay. When we do, depending on what. I, well, what's on Game Pass? Well, if we're doing it after the show, after this show, yeah, we'll, we'll be streamed to Boss Rush. Okay. Um, I want to try to stream. I mean, this is going to be kind of a lot, but I want to try to stream like three nights a week on my personal one, mm-hmm. or or four nights depending, and yeah. then three nights on on Boss Rush. So. Oh. Um, okay. Or like on Saturday we record the sh- when we record the show we'll stream it to boss rush and then that night if i want to stream something i'll stream it to my personal one that's probably what's going to happen okay um i also thought about just getting rid of my personal twitch and just streaming straight to boss rush all the time so we could yeah. at least have like that affiliate status yeah for us yeah. to not that a thousand people are going to sub to us or anything but you know what i mean that just like yeah it could be something neat to well, have on our profile well, you know, like, that's the thing, though, is, like, if you, if, like, that's why I was, like, like, part of me had thought about that as an option, too, because the, the thing is, is if you do go on there, then, and you're streaming games and stuff, um, and people who, who like watching stuff on Twitch and all that, um, you know, that, that, your, your possibility of getting people who, don't even know what that the show exists Mm -hmm. then getting them in in interested in the platform Mm -hmm. and stuff like may help you know with finding new people who want to listen to the show as well yeah like i mean the thing is too is like if we all just took like if we all just took one night and i i know it's a little bit harder for you and ed to do this uh but if we all just took one night a week and just agreed that hey tonight we're going to stream this game on the boss rush channel mm-hmm. you know instead of our yeah. personal one um that's something i would talk i would want to talk to you guys about too yeah uh and then like the other nights we can just do our personal ones but yeah i don't well and and once once <laughs> once the series once the series x is out that'll be a lot easy well oh i guess I guess though it still links to links your account to. I don't know. Well, we'll yeah, we'll. I mean, everybody. I think figure some out. I just wish that they they would give you the option, like kind of like uh, like um, Twitter does and stuff, where you can have multiple, mm-hmm. you know, uh, accounts, and then you can just switch between the two of them. Yeah, that would be that would be so much easier. Um, yeah. Like you know, and that that's something maybe that we could uh we could try to start up a campaign for uh for people <laughs> to uh to message uh Twitch and say, Hey, you know Yeah. Like you wanna do something that could help make things better, you know, especially for people like us who who want to be on your platform but we we would you know, when we have shows and stuff that we we would like to do certain things on you know, one channel and certain on a, on another, yeah. you know, but we would like, like to be easier. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I've, I've been like, that's something I've just really been struggling with the last couple of weeks is like, where do we stream what? And, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I mean, obviously all the shows are going to be streamed to the boss rush channel. That's, mm-hmm. that's like the, a uh, no questions asked thing. It's, Okay, well, if I'm going to stream a book club game, do I stream it to Boss Rush games? If I'm streaming Destiny, where do I stream that? Because of Tower Casuals. If I'm streaming an indie game, do I stream it to my personal one? You know, like, it's just... Ugh. And, like, you can't stream the same thing to two different Twitch channels because that's against their rules, apparently. Um, yeah. So that question is out because I was just going to restream i think is 14.99 a month to stream to multiple twitch channels and multiple channels in general so i was thinking about that but apparently that's against twitch's (laughs) twitch's rules so okay Um, i don't know it's it's 
I'm just struggling with it to be honest with you, but it, it, yeah. it'll work itself out and then, you know, when it does. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we'll figure, we'll figure it out. Just try to, yeah, talk. We'll f- try to look into things more and try to try to figure something out. But yeah, either way, you know, for people listening, there'll there'll be stuff to watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's it just it was it was a lot easier with Mixer too, because then you could yeah. just co-stream, and then it just wouldn't yeah. matter, you yeah. know. Yeah, uh, but that option doesn't exist on Twitch, which is te- terrible, you know. Yeah, I mean there there is some form of that, but I don't I don't remember how to do it. It's, you can I mean, host it's, people. It's you just host hosting. People. It's yeah. just hosting, but you can't stream and host at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like you could on Mix or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, who knows? Like. I guess it all depends on how serious uh, Facebook and all those things moving forward, you know, with Mixer kind of dropping out. Um, yeah. You know, like, I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe they, they'll they try to, you know, try to strive to, to be like something that Mixer was and, and improve upon it. I mean, I I would hope so, but the other part of me is like it might be Madden syndrome, where like there's no competition, so why would they change? Because it's not broken, you know. Yeah. Because it's just, I mean, Twitch is good enough, but there's still a lot of things that they could fix that to, to make it yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I wish. I wish it was better, but it's not. So it is what yeah. it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Streaming is... I, I have enjoyed streaming, though, to be honest with mm-hmm. you, the last couple weeks. Uh, it's been fun. I've, I mean, met some cool people already and trying to network and make sure, you know, people, like, A, kind of know what Boss Rush is and trying to get people in and everything. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, there's a lot of people in the Desti- Destiny community that I've met through ca- Tower Casuals already, and uh, you know, there's there. I'm trying to get some people f- to guest on this show, to guest on Pow Block, to guest on the main show, and like the way we're kind of doing the main show now with panels and mm-hmm. trying to highlight guests and and book club and stuff now. Like that show is is kind of becoming more of what I envisioned it to be when we started it <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, if you're listening to this on podcast feeds, uh, you should go listen to the women's panel that we did on Thursday. Um, yeah, I need to listen to that. I can't wait. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, Celeste hosted, and, and all the guests were great. And, dude, after that show, we we <laughs> we had – I should have recorded it because it would have been such great content to have, you know, yeah. it was like behind-the-scenes content. But we t- ended up having like a two-hour like after-show conversation. Yeah. And it was just, it was fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, streaming's been fun. I've been enjoying it. It's just the struggle of like getting the schedule down and seeing where we're streaming certain things. But again, yeah, we'll get yeah. there. It's, uh, it's still, a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. So. It's still fairly new to us. And I'm, you know, like I, I'm st- I, like, I try. I, I I do try to uh, to remember to just like be talk like somewhat talking and somewhat you know like <clears throat> present while I'm streaming. Yeah, you it's know? hard. But, it's hard to but, do when nobody's in the chat. To be honest yeah, with you, uh, yeah. But luckily, if you're streaming with with people, like sometimes their audience chimes in and pops in, and it's it's easier when you're streaming with people. Yeah, um, for sure, because you have that kind of headset mentality um, yeah but. yeah for for me i've yeah i've definitely just been kind of doing the the inner inner monologue uh commentary on what's going on in the game but just bringing <laughs> bringing it out and uh, and you know yeah. and do a physical physical uh form but you know and like uh, even then though like when i'm like 
attention <laughs> to what's going on and all that stuff. Sometimes I just com- completely forget that that I'm streaming. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you get you get uh, sucked in. Oh yeah. To everything. So. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely not easy. You know, the people that are good at it, like I, like it's definitely my, a skill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I when think you're not, when you're not very skilled at either playing the game and talking, trying to mash them together is yeah. not, it's not great. Yeah. And I, and you know, and like, I think part of it too. And I, and I think you can probably relate is like, I've just never like I'm outgoing when I'm around people that I know and yeah. have known for a long time. But when it comes to stuff like that, or just like people in general, like, unless I know you really well or have known you for a long time or, you know, certain situations like at at a job or something like that, where you kind of try to entertain yourself and others to just make it through the day. Right. (laughs) Like I can be, I can be entertaining and I can be, uh, I can be outgoing in those, in certain situations, but like it, it's something that I, that I've never really been too good at. Um, I'm just definitely more of an introvert. So, but, um, yeah, I mean, but you know, that's the thing is like, that's why I joined the show and, and why I even try streaming stuff at all is just trying to, uh, you know, get better at, at that stuff. And like, I've tried hosting a couple of times and, and I didn't hate it. Um, you know, I enjoyed hosting the show, you know, AX and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, like, honestly, like you're just so much better at, you've been doing it for so long and you're just so much better at, at, um, remembering things and stuff like that, that it, it just does it, it would take me forever. <laughs> I just think, I just think the show, the, like it is what it is. I'm, you know, like I've said, I'm not. I, I don't really never really been one to need like any kind of like position like that or anything, not saying that you do or, or whatever, but I just, it's just not me. It's just not, I'm not, I'm not like, I can be a leader in some situations when I need to be, but it's just not something that I ever really would cho- choose to be. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I, I, what I always, I always told <laughs> Ed is like, I feel like I'm a better Robin than Batman. <laughs> yeah. Like, just be, yeah. I, I feel more comfortable playing off of people and, and commenting mm-hmm. on things than actually doing this part of the show. Right. But, yeah. Um, so I kind of, I guess I just kind of do it out of necessity instead of like really wanting to, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and I think, you know, and I think it's easier to like, you know, when it's just like two of us, like, you know, kind of like when we've been doing this show. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's not, you know, like well, the, with this show, it's it's pretty pretty laid back. So like we don't, you know, like for the most part, we don't have like a big list of like all these things. We have some topics that we we like try to look up before <laughs> before we start the show to, to have things to talk about. But it's not like you know, it's not like you're having to try to remember anything. Yeah, you know, and like you know, like we used to do, where where you guys would literally word for word read everything from from an article, and it's just like that. It, yeah, and that's, that's where that's where it gets a little difficult is trying to. Yeah, and that's you know. that's where Ed and I have actually been having that conversation. To and uh, when Power Block comes out this week, I'm sure everybody will kind of notice, but we're. Well, after we hit all we hit all of our milestone episodes, right? And I felt like that those episodes were important for us to hit. But like, yeah. now that we've hit those, we're kind of moving in different directions with the shows, right? In terms yeah. of just being more conversational, which I think we've done a pretty decent job on this show to to do it. But the, especially yeah. the other shows, uh, unless it's like one v one, right? Like I think yeah. that that show needs to have like especially if we're interviewing people that we don't know like yeah research and notes and questions and stuff yeah um structure yeah it, that yeah. those definitely need to have a structure to them because yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, as you can see, we're like what forty minutes into the show, and we haven't had any structure to the show, and that's that's how I kind of <laughs> like that's how I envision the future of our shows, right? Is like, yeah, okay, we have some a very limited structure, but we're still just gonna hang out and talk about games because that's what we like to do, and yeah. Uh, I've already talked about Ed to moving Pal Block into that kind of that kind of way. Um, mm-hmm. In this show, obviously, I, I I like just hanging out and talking about Xbox without having to like, oh my gosh, all these news things. And of course, when when news hits, like we're gonna talk yeah. about it. Yeah, um, exactly. And like but, if like during that. Well, I was just going to say what the thing is, is like times like right now, this kind of unstructured version of the show, it like helps us is because we're not, you know, we can be consistent in the unstructured shows Mm -hmm. versus trying to do a structured show. And then when there's no news or very limited news, like how are we supposed to be structured when there's nothing to be structured about, you know, like we're not, we're also not the first place that people are going to come to get hard hitting news and stuff like that. You know, like we don't, we're not to the point yet where we can, you know, go over to developers, uh, you know, places where their, where their business is being ran and, and get interviews, you know, like in their buildings and things like that before anyone else does. Like, you know, we're not, we just don't have that, that kind of access right now so like to try to pretend like like we're on you know can be on that level of of news is just kind of a waste of time honestly yeah and like when that when the xbox events starts like i think they said july 23rd so that weekend we'll obviously talk about it but like yeah you know, I don't really want that to be structured either. I just want to, I just want to be like, hey, the Xbox event happened, and just kind of like have a, have a list of games that we're excited about, and then we'll just talk about mm-hmm. the games we're excited about. You know, I don't really yeah. think like in the past we had like the a whole list of the games, and we went through each one and said how excited we were. I don't really want to do that either because that yeah. feel like some of the games. Honestly, sometimes I've given an answer that I felt was not very genuine. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Because, like, to be honest, a lot of the PlayStation Five stuff I wasn't excited for. There was about three or four games that I was excited for, mm-hmm. but we still went through the whole list and talked about every game. You know, and I was just like, yeah. well, you know, I think Horizon is the game that stands out the most to me in that set, and mm-hmm. uh, Spider Man looks cool, but again, I didn't really enjoy what I played of Spider Man. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, and and. I, I think I think that one is definitely going to be one that I think for. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people who who are looking forward to it regardless. But I think that's one that we of those things that Sony's kind of got going on that we still don't really like. We know about now, but at the same time, we really don't know a whole lot about. You know, so it's yeah, like I you know that's one that. I could see some people like if you're not you weren't into the first Spider-Man game like you know like you're what they've showed us right now is not enough for for some people to be able to decide whether they want that game or whether they're going to be excited for that game or not yet you know mm-hmm. yeah like we need to see a little bit more about like what you know, like the story stuff or like what, you know, what exactly is the situation in this game? And is it more about like, you know, the combat versus the, you know, flying through the, through the town or whatever, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, when the Xbox event happens, I'm sure they're going to show a lot. And if there's mm-hmm. stuff that's interesting to us, we'll write down like what's interesting to us and we'll talk about it. And obviously Halo is kind of the big one that they're touting mm-hmm. right now. And yeah, I'm really excited for Halo. I hope it, I hope it doesn't disappoint honestly, because yeah. Halo five was, I, it was fun to play with friends, but the story element of Halo has always been the draw for me. Um, yeah. And the story wasn't there. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, like as we like little bits and pieces here coming out and there's, you know, like people just kind of 
clamoring about about it and you know theorizing things and stuff and like one of the you know the ma- big things that people are starting to starting to see is that like all the like all the enemies all the all the different kinds of factions of you know that have ex- existed throughout the uh the series are all seem to to be uh, going to exist in in this world all at the same time Mm -hmm. and you know and like there's a lot of people have been kind of talking about like how cool it would be if you're like showing up and there's like the battle between this faction and that faction going Mm -hmm. on and and you can just kind of like you know like throw yourself into certain situations and kind of be you know like a a three-way fight kind of thing going on or whatever you know like yeah 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 it's it you know like things that are coming out of it and like with the the banished and stuff like that and yeah like, i would love to I'm, see like i'm getting super excited for it <laughs> yeah and it, it makes me want to kind of revisit halo wars too and i know that yeah. luke luke lore has been streaming it on on his twitch channel um, yeah which, yeah and uh i it's been making me want to go back and play those games uh, so it's Halo needs to hit, I feel like. I really yeah. think Halo needs to hit, and if it doesn't hit, people are going to be upset, and I feel like Microsoft is really going to take a hit if Halo doesn't hit, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not to say that they don't have other great games in development, but you're launching a system with a, with a, a Halo game with a, a series that's been around for 20 years that you don't really have any... Like what you have Gears and Forza, but I feel like people know what to expect from those games at this point. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, Gears Five was great, but they don't have the stable of exclusives that Sony gets touted for, right? They just mm-hmm. they just don't, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, sea of Thieves is fun, right? We love Sea of Thieves, but yeah, it's not exactly God of War in terms of ratings, right? Like it's just. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun game to play with your friends like they need they need that and i feel like hellblade 2 is going to be that which i'm very excited for i think that whatever fable is could be that i think whatever this perfect dark game that's rumored could be that but they're not coming first halo is and so if you yeah i feel like yeah game pass and a cheaper box and all these things that microsoft has going for it is a great is it, it's like a great package right it's a great package to to sell but if halo doesn't deliver then what's gonna make people upgrade you know so yeah yeah i i i think like honestly and the you know and the i don't know why because we still there's still a lot to learn about it but i i just feel something about it i just feel really sure about about this like i think i think it's just that you know like they've they've seen the criticisms and you know no developer really wants to spend all that time and money on a game just for you know people to not really like it Mm -hmm. um and so i think with that that in mind you know when they were moving forward into this i think they you know, I'm guessing that they just are like, okay, we really, you know, we've really got to make sure that we're, we're putting all, you know, all of our manpower and doing the best that we can to work on, on a story because like we already, you know, everyone already knows that they do an amazing job with, with the combat and with the, you know, all their strong suits of, of, you know, what's, what's made the halo games you know fun to play you know as far as when it comes to multiplayer and in all those different things like they've they've got all that stuff down and you know and like they've tried to improve on certain things and add things and you know like i honestly i think the guns like not a lot of people really talk about them you know we've talked about them quite a bit here and there but just the way the guns and everything look in those games have just 
like been so significantly better looking over each game as as a new game comes out like they've just really really made made those those things just really pop out and stand out and just look amazing in game yeah. and uh you know i think they do all that stuff like they're just really good at that stuff and so if they can really just focus on trying to do an amazing storyline, I honestly don't see how how it could, you know, fail. If as long as they're spending the time on making sure that they really come up with a good, a good story for it. Yeah, because I, you know, I think everyone, you know, believes in them as far as everything else goes. Like no one, no one doubts that they're not gonna make a, a good looking game yeah it's it's just that story part because you know like five was a great looking game yeah um but it, again like you said it's that story that was lacking and and there's a lot of people that are there for that you know yeah and don't care about how a game looks so yeah yeah i mean i i i really hope that they do some interesting things you know i we did a when we did a episode talking about is hey there's a there's a pod clip on our youtube channel if uh, is this a make or break halo and we were talking about all the changes that i feel like that they could make to the game and somebody commented on the video and said halo the people that play halo don't want any of that stuff mm-hmm. you know they want the simplicity that halo is yeah and I get that there's that old school Halo fandom, right? Mm -hmm. But those numbers are dwindling. You know, like that old school Halo fan is older now. They might not play games anymore. They might have moved on to other first person shooters. And that, and Microsoft's not going to be happy if 500,000 people are, you know, download or buy Halo, right? Like they, Mm -hmm. they want millions of people to be, to be, have access to Halo. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I truly think you have to do the thing where maybe you find attachments that alter the way the guns work, you know, in terms of a loadout. Mm-hmm. Maybe you enter games with a specific loadout, like Call of Duty. You know, Halo 4 did that, and I thought it was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you have different scopes that you can add to your battle rifle that help with accuracy or, you know, three times zoom, four times zoom. Uh, and mm-hmm. you change them out depending on what map you're on because some maps are smaller than others and you don't need a 10 times scope on it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's different things that you could do. And I think Gears Tactics is actually a great example of of what to do. Now, it doesn't need to be that in-depth. And I know that Gears Tactics is a strategy game, not a first-person shooter. But mm-hmm. the weapon idea is there where like you can customize your weapons to do different things, have different abilities, you know, that kind of thing. And I think if... Microsoft takes that approach with Halo's weapons that, you know, even if it's a really light version of that, it could change mm-hmm. the game immensely. Will, yeah. it be, will it be hard to balance? Of course it will, but they're not an indie studio that's making a small indie game. This is Microsoft and 343 who have hundreds of people working on this, and they get paid to do that, right? Yeah. And I think that that's the step that Halo needs to take even in like a campaign mode where like maybe you find a base battle rifle, but you level it up somehow, or, you know, we just played tomb Raider and there's different ways to customize and, and upgrade your weapons through there. And I know the first tomb Raider is very basic, but, uh, it, once you get to like shadow, the tomb Raider, there's so many different ways that you could do that stuff, you mm-hmm. know, that it could totally change the way you play the game. You mm-hmm. know, what if you need, what if you want a short range, powerful battle rifle? You know, it's yeah. like, like that would be so cool to do, to change things like that. Um, so I yeah, don't know. I, yeah, I uh, like just after playing, um, you know, the Modern Warfare again, the Modern Warfare remake, like the way that they did, like how there's so many attachments and things that you can do to alter the gun, mm-hmm. like, and you know, make make you know each each piece ha- you know adds and subtracts to to the overall uh you know uh balance of what you know the abilities of the gun 
and what it can do. Like honestly, like if they were to do something like that with with Halo, I think that would be amazing. Like, you know, just like the thing is, is like the whole the whole idea of the Halo. A lot of the Halo guns are like this this crazy like alien tech type stuff. And, you know, like, it would be so easy to explain that kind of stuff, you know, of like, you know, like, oh, there's this and this part of the gun that, like, if you, you know, similar to, like, the whole Star Wars thing, if you, uh, you, uh, you cut power off to this part of the gun or whatever, and you, you, you know, redirect that power to this part of the gun, mm-hmm. it will, you know, have better accuracy, but it won't shoot as far or you know or whatever you know there there's there's things that you could obviously you know get creative with and and explain why why they're they're doing these changes to the or why you have the ability to do these changes to the guns you know yeah like I, i mean you're dealing with with tech you know just in general with master chief and like having having the ability of basically having you know ai that like can basically look up anything that would exist and what their form of the internet would be and tell you like automatically you know kind of thing where you could have it where like you know like there's they have like a thing where you're you're kind of learning about modifying guns or something and or you know like with everything that's going on in the game with having all these different factions and trying to learn about, you know, their guns and, and things like that and how, how to you you know, how to compare them up with your armor and, and get the, the best, you know, and like, that's another thing is you have your armor that, that has like an ability to, you know, modify how well you shoot or anything like that as well. They could work those kind of things in. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff there that, that we, you know, like, unless you've read the books, you, you really don't know a whole lot about how it all works Mm. exactly. Yeah. And so like in that vague void of information is where they can, they can build upon, you know, the lore and, and why things do do what they do and stuff like that you know Mm -hmm. there's a lot there that can be explored i feel like in the in that universe and you know and for them to not try to explore and come up with you know new ways to get people excited about the game you know in my in my opinion would just be kind of the wrong way of of going about something right yeah. And and you know I think they can keep that that simplicity um, of what, what Halo is, but at the same time, you know, bringing some complexity to to things like guns and stuff that, in my opinion, doesn't doesn't really affect it in a in a way that would make it feel like a completely different game, but at the same time, make it feel, you know, more, more modern, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I think I, and you know, they've, they've, this is the longest we've gone without a mainline halo game. Um, and so I think Microsoft's definitely taking their time, definitely putting in the, like the the money and the energy and the resources into making this their vision of Halo, right? And and mm-hmm. I think that that's I think that's how they've been treating the franchise as of late because they know they messed up with Halo Five. Um, they've mm-hmm. been open about it, so I think mm-hmm. I I think we're going to get a great Halo game. Um, I I don't I don't have any doubts. It's just that mm-hmm. I think that they need to make sure that this is the Halo game that they want it, they want to make uh, because mm-hmm. I I loved Halo Four right like I thought that that was a step in the right direction I know I'm in the minority there but um, mm-hmm. I really just think I really think that Microsoft needs to hit it out of the park with Halo at launch or they I don't want to say they're going to take a step back but I think 
with all the goodwill that's happening right now, I think that that's going to set them back a little bit before they get these other games out. Um, and I know they said they want to have a new, like a, a big first party title almost every three months. I think they said is mm-hmm. the goal. Although I think yeah. COVID has probably changed their plans on that a little bit, but yeah, well, we'll I, I still think that they're going to be pretty competitive. Um, either way about getting games out um when it like you know then that's something that i'm looking forward to and i'm curious about is i don't i i think you know for all this time that that sony has been kind of coming out with stuff you know fairly you know for, at a fairly decent rate or whatever for a while um I don't know that they're going to be able to continue that or or start that in this next generation. And I, I feel like that that's something kind of like, you know, it, it kind of happened with the Xbox uh, one when it when it came out, you know, like they had a they had a good lineup of of exclusive games and stuff that were coming out for the Xbox one. And, you know, and yeah, a lot of more people bought the PS4, but at the same time, like there weren't as gr- that that many exclusives or anything that people were really looking forward to. That's like, true. Like no, you that's, know when it when it first came out. That's true, and the PlayStation was a hundred dollars cheaper too. Yeah, uh, because yeah. I mean, like you said, Xbox had the exclusives, right? They had a, they had a Forza game at launch, right? They had mm-hmm. uh they had Titanfall, Titanfall. with yeah, in, within had. the first three months. They had uh, Rise, which was a graphical powerhouse. I know it wasn't a great game, but I think yeah. a lot of people liked it as a launch title. Yeah, uh, and Sunset Overdrive. People were looking forward to, and yeah, like there, you know, there was a lot of there was a bunch of things, but you know, and I think on Sunset Overdrive and and Titanfall, like those those were you know like. I feel like the people who did play it really loved those games, mm-hmm. but not a lot of people played it because so many people in the very, very beginning, you know, when those games were coming out, weren't, weren't, you know, didn't have an Xbox. Yeah. It wasn't until, you know, a couple of years later that people would finally start, you know, getting an Xbox. And even then, you know, like it was still a pretty slow, slow pace of people. And it it really honestly doesn't feel like it wasn't until like the last two or three years that people have really been picking up on on getting Xboxes. Um, And, you know, luckily a lot of those that stuff is on Game Pass or whatever. But but I think I think if 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 Microsoft can can you know, at least have something similar to what, how the, the one was when it first started. And like you said, you know, and they've talked about that they really want to be able to always have every three months, a new game coming out, you know, some will be bigger than others, but, but they, they've got enough uh, teams now that they can, they can, you know, switch off and kind of, you know, have, have teams do even be working on two different things at once and do like maybe a medium or a bigger size game and then you know have a quick turnaround on a smaller game you know like we've been seeing with stuff we've seen you know like with uh, you know they're going to be doing hellblade too but you know they've made they're working on three you know they were working on three games at one point or whatever or in the process of you know figuring out three different things yeah and you know I mean, Bleeding plus, edge came out plus ninja theory i mean yeah three projects you're talking about like bleeding edge and then uh hellblade 2 and then i think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about project Mara, which is that yeah. kind of psychological i don't know if it's a psychological horror game but it looks pretty intense so yeah Oh. Yeah, and and I think I think uh, you know like I think that they're they're a perfect example of what it seems like Microsoft is trying to do with these studios. They want they want a big, you know, flagship game 
from from these developers but they also want to give them the freedom to be able to do passion projects or you know if they have any ideas of things that they would really like to do they want to give them the opportunity and the money to be able to do those things as well Mm -hmm. Um, you know in between uh big games just because now they know they have they have plenty of people or plenty uh developers and studios making stuff now that they don't have to you know rely so heavily on just you know halo and or just gears or just forza you know like yeah i mean this be able to kind of free up some time for those people to really do their magic and take yeah. their time yeah, it's what I I think it's what I said before, right? Like I think yeah. if the, if these other games hit the way they want them to hit, it's going to take an, a monumentous it's going to take that pressure off of Halo and Gears to be the games mm-hmm. um that yeah. they like that they've had to be for so long. And I think that's why a lot of people were disappointed in Halo 5 because Halo is the top of the pyramid for Microsoft. It has been yeah. since the Xbox launched, right? And and you know, I kind of, th- I kind of feel like, and then maybe you agree with me that Gears has kind of overtaken Halo as Microsoft's best franchise. But um, at least I feel that way with with Gears Five, even though we yeah. kind of struggled through uh, some of it. But yeah, but the, but the, you know, like we've kind of determined that a lot of that was something to do with, I think, I think code, net code, or yeah. something. Yeah. Um. Because you know, and I I haven't played it single solo yet, but you know, like it seems like most people that played it by themselves and to experience it uh, didn't have any of those issues that we did. So yeah, so I mean, it's a uh, it's a work in progress. I think I think Microsoft has been delivering on everything they've messaged so far. I think that that's the main goal for them uh Mm -hmm. and i I think to keep delivering on their messaging uh regardless of you know even the mixer stuff and and Mm -hmm. facebook gaming stuff and whatever that entails you know that's a business decision and i respect that even though i don't think facebook gaming is the way to go but uh in terms of in terms of people who have facebook and the way they want to market xcloud i think that's probably the smart business decision on paper Um, yeah but as far as they're launching they're launching stuff and and everything i think that uh the titles that they have announced and that we are kind of speculating are going to kind of make a lot of xbox fans happy and maybe even you know the the rumors about perfect dark being a third person stealth action game might actually (laughs) bring some people over from sony to play that game yeah Um, you know i I, i'm excited for the prospect of a good third person perfect dark you know yeah i've been saying that for a long time like that's how they could reboot it yeah yeah i like it just you know like and and i've mentioned this like when when this first was starting to kind of become a rumor is you know like just like one of the their most the most beloved franchises uh that that had been exclusive to you know the original Xbox was the Splinter Cell you mm-hmm. know games and and if they if they can like capture that kind of magic in a more modern you know game with with a character that they have all the rights and own like and not have to rely on U- Ubisoft to to be able to make that kind of stuff. I mean, that's like that's like the dream scenario for for a company, like to be able to, you know, it's you know, it's I'll be honest, it's very similar to Outer Worlds. You yeah. know, like that's that's like their their idea of what they would have wanted a Fallout game to be like. And they don't have to use the Fallout name. They can they can make it better and do their own thing, and and not have to worry about Bethesda, you know, to to do get that kind of you know 
game that they've been want, you know making and they loved making and would like to keep on making right and so you know if yeah if you could do something like that with the with with the you know perfect dark and and kind of capture what people really loved about the splinter cell games i could i could definitely see it being uh you know one of those games that that's getting like nines and tens you know mm-hmm. like it, it just using using like focusing on what what made people fans of xbox in the first place you know yeah. like they ultimately that's i feel like a lot they want to win those people over but they also want to create stuff that that will bring new people in, you know. Yeah. And and I think, you know, they've they've kind of made it obvious that that's important to them is the people who've stuck with them throughout even the, you know, the the downtimes and stuff like that. And, you know, like things like Game Pass and all that where they're they're rewarding people who who've stuck with Xbox and stuff like that. Yeah. They're giving, you know, giving trying to make good on on things and and uh trying to to you know focus on what you know what people want and like you said like being just being forward about things being transparent about things like they've been doing such a good job i feel like with with that you know everywhere they can you know there's certain things like mixer and stuff where you know i feel like it's a, it's a little bit more difficult well, I don't blame I don't blame Xbox so for the difficult. I don't blame Xbox yeah. for the mixer stuff. That's a Microsoft yeah. decision. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's definitely not Xbox's yeah. thing. I mean, Xbox yeah. clearly you can use your Xbox through Mixer and it's built into the platform, but it's not mm-hmm. part of the Xbox business. So, I mean, I think Microsoft in general could have been a little bit better about that. But yeah, um, you know. Sure. I think what Xbox has been delivering on, I think that they are really delivering their message and, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say about that. I just, you know, I, I really want the Xbox to do well, which I think it will, you know, I mean, like, People say that Xbox is losing now, I, but they've still sold 50 million boxes, right? That's not mm-hmm. terrible amount, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's you know, and and the thing is, is is that like consoles, you know, it it matters. Yes, like it, it would they would be lying to say that it doesn't, but at the same time, like you know, they've they've got two different platforms or well honestly they've got multiple different platforms almost now that they're focusing on and so it's no longer just about a box for them it's it's bigger than that and so like for them to just focus on on how many boxes or consoles they're selling that you know they wouldn't be doing their job properly if they worry about just that right now right and so you know like they want to they're trying to be better about pc people people who want to be on pc they're trying to be better about you know like giving us options to be able to possibly you know someday be able to play our games on the switch or or you know for yeah. sure on our phones or on you know our computers or whatever for you know so it's They've got a lot more to focus on, and I and I, I feel like more and more we're gonna probably see where how many consoles and stuff like that. There'll be there'll be people who are still gonna hold on to those things, but it's just not gonna be that important anymore. Yeah, you know, it's going to come down to what kind of games they're making for their platforms. Yeah, and and how many of them they have, and you know, it, it. At the end of the day, that's really all that should matter. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, like we've been excited about all the kind of like friendships and stuff that have started between, you know, Nintendo and, and Xbox, or 
yeah. you know, like just the the cross play stuff and all that, like like more and more like as as fun sometimes as the console war stuff might be for some people. It's just not important anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it, like, I'm just you know excited uh, to moving forward to uh, to see like what you know what kind of new things come from from these consoles and the hardware and and you know like to me that's all that really matters at this point is just seeing you know what what PlayStation and what Xbox end up doing with their tech to to really make it feel like oh wow you know like we couldn't do this in the last you know last generation and I'm glad that you know, like that we're that we can finally do these things now. You yeah. know, like yeah. Sony showing showing with the uh, Ratchet and Clank, the whole you know, like warping into different worlds and stuff. Like that kind of stuff is 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 a cool idea. And like honestly, like I teased last week, like I wanted to talk about. Um, like some more things like that that we think would would be cool or like some ideas that we might have of things that that they could possibly do with this next generation that we've never got to see like that yeah you know so you know i'm i want both consoles to do really well because the more competition there is between the two the better that the things that we're going to get from both sides are going to be you know and unfortunately there, you know, like this generation, there was a lot of times where both consoles really didn't have much going on, yeah. and you know, and it was kind of just boring because Sony was, just, you know, was ahead, and they felt like they, there was a lot of stuff they really didn't need to do because, you know, they're already so far ahead. So what's the point in stressing, you know, kind yeah. of thing? So. We just uh, that doesn't work. It doesn't work good for uh, for people. So I want I want both consoles to do really well, so we can really have just like a back and forth uh, kind of generation where they're they're just kind of bringing it all to the table and to co- compete with each other. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I I agree a hundred percent. And the thing is, it's like. I, I did see stuff from PlayStation that I wanted to play, you know? I yeah. mean, it, it's not like I'm not going to get a PlayStation eventually. Yeah. Um, you know, I really want to play Kenna. I think Kenna looks yeah. like a stunning title that I'm pretty sure is a PlayStation console exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, Ratchet and Clank looked awesome. Yeah, that looks so good. And and Horizon. So, like, yeah. whenever Horizon comes out, I there's three games right there that I'll probably pick up with the console, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know how PlayStation now is going to work with all that, but, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they'll finally make the switch over to doing what Xbox is doing with game pass because, you know, this is kind of a good transition point into games costing $10 more next gen. Mm -hmm. You know, we've already seen 2k announced NBA 2k 21 being 69 99. That's a, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think de- developers deserve more money mm-hmm. for these games, and uh, you know, games cost a ton of money to to produce and make, and and you know, sixty dollars is relatively cheap compared to what we used to pay for you know cartridge games or mm-hmm. you know games back in the day. I remember paying like ninety bucks for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for N sixty four. That's a ton of money, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, they yeah because weren't they yeah it was like eighty nine ninety nine or whatever yeah uh, especially yeah. with games that weren't first party games and games that had licensed music and licensed characters like that kind of thing yeah. were more expensive and people kind of forget that to the point where like sixty dollars is really cheap for a game these days so um, yeah but you know it going up by ten dollars like that's I mean people are already kind of being stingy with their money right now because of this COVID stuff and people kind of Mm -hmm. still being out of work and all these other things like $10 goes a long way (laughs) in Mm -hmm. a lot of situations. Uh, so yeah. Cause I, I'll be honest, you know, like, uh, I mean, 
just just think you know think about this like how many how many people are going to maybe are like that don't have like either don't have an xbox yet or just waiting for the new one to come out because they want to get that because they just you know like they're saving their money and like i could see a situation where there's people who are buying the xbox uh the series x over the ps5 because they know that when they get the xbox um and they don't have a lot of extra money right now Mm. that they can they can afford to pay the little bit of money per month to have game pass and know that they'll have a ton of games to play right off the bat that they that they can just have and download whatever they want to play um without having to spend any more than the like 10 or whatever dollars a month you know like because of everything that's going on you know and like eventually once things you know can go back to normal and you know people are kind of back to normal again you know then then they can worry about buying games and stuff again but like i could see a situation with everything that's going on where where that game pass and the idea of playing those older games but looking better and playing better um for very little price is going to be the more enticing you know option and you know help sell more xboxes over you know ps5s Mm -hmm. if you know if that if that that option doesn't exist on their platform you know so but well we'll see i think i think you're going to see a lot of subscriptions become more prominent i think that ubisoft subscription service is going to come to consoles this year um Mm -hmm. the i think it's like what is it like 10 bucks a month or 15 bucks a month which is kind of steep but you also get all their dlc plans and everything too for those games so yeah um, yeah you know i i don't know how big of a deal that is or not depending on what ubisoft games you like because they're all i mean they're all something i'm interested in playing to be honest with you but well and that's the thing like i i've i'll be honest i've been kind of just just holding out on dropping the the um my my stuff that i have for like uh what what's it called like for battlefield and all the like all their stuff that the um ea access Mm -hmm. like i've i've kind of just stuck with that so i could play certain things Mm -hmm. that i've gotten rid of over the time need for speed heat by the way yeah kind of fun it Uh, is it's i I really liked it i played the demo or like you got a like an it's like a 10 10 hour hour access yeah yeah but it's it's on the service now like it's just it's just on the service now oh nice yeah because i I was looking i'll definitely have to download that yeah because i was looking through uh the game and some of the games because i was like i wonder if ea's put anything out on here lately and like they added unraveled 2 they added um I mean, Battlefront's on there now. Uh, I think Jedi Fallen Order just got added. Like, oh, all, okay. Like, I, 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 don't don't quote me on that. I think it's on there. Okay. I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah. Um, yeah that that service. If you like EA's games, it's a decent service. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it's only it's only if you pay yearly. If you p- pay by the year, it's 30 bucks a year. So that's what 250 a month. I yeah, think is what it comes out to. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's dirt cheap. I mean, yeah, the games don't come on there like right away or super early, unless right, but, I mean, going for certain things. But it's still. But I mean, even if you like, even if you like their old games, like mm-hmm. Skate Three is on there. The entire Mass Effect series is on there. All the Dead Space games are on there. Titanfall One and Two are both on there. Battlefront Two is on there. Uh, mm-hmm. the, all their EA originals are on there, so like there, there's games there. It's a it's yeah. a good service if you like their game. All their sports games are on there. Their sports games, like their new sports Mass games. Are, uh, yeah, all the Mass Effect games are on there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, it's it's a decent service if you like mm-hmm. EA games. I know people have a certain, uh, you know, something to say about EA a lot, but that mm-hmm. service is pretty good. 
So. Yeah, yeah. It's I'll 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 say honestly, it's been one of the the few things that they've been doing really well for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you know, like I I definitely cannot in any way trash talk that, that service that they've been offering like i think it's been a solid service and right it like was, that super cheap it i was mean game that's dirt cheap it was game pass before game pass yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i uh, they've they've been killing it with with that service for sure but yeah um so I mean, hopefully I, they're turning stuff around here anyways but yeah i, I mean, mean i I think plus like if you are interested in that squadrons game, you get a 10 hour free demo of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, I mean, that's a game I will probably play for 10 hours and be like, okay, that's, that's all I needed, (laughs) you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Game pass is a good service. Yeah. Yeah. Access is a good service. Maybe. And I, and hopefully, uh, PS, uh, now will be be a better service you know i, mean, I think i think it's competition i think it's gotten better i don't think yeah. i don't think it's near where game pass is but all the yeah. playstation 4 games on that service you can download now so, yeah um yeah that Which i mean is that right a big there. change yeah yeah but they, they've been rotating their first party stuff in and out lately oh, okay so i mean right now the the big game on there right now is Spider-Man, but that's supposed to be rotated out at the end of July, I think. So hmm. I don't know the way they rotate their first party stuff in and out is weird, but the games on there are pretty decent. I think so. I, th- I think with that, they're trying to go with the, the off chance that someone downloads it while it's on there, didn't get a chance to finish it. And so then they got to buy it now. Yeah. Because it rotated out. Yeah. To finish it. Which, you know, like they're trying to, trying to kind of, you know, lure, lure people end up to downloading stuff and then hopefully hoping that they, that they have to buy it in order to finish it. Yeah. And and I've, I've run into that issue with game pass before also, I mean, not first party games, but you know, like the Batman Arkham series, you know, like I played a little bit of Arkham Asylum and then those games weren't on game pass anymore. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm just not (laughs) finishing these games. Although that collection is only like 20 bucks. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the thing, you know. Like, I still need to buy Ashen mm-hmm. because I never did get to finish that yet, and that's been off of of Game Pass now for a while. Yeah, um, but I do plan on buying it because I think it's an amazing, well done game, and they, you know, they deserve the money. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is, I do want to support, you know, those those people uh, outside of Game Pass. You know, uh, but it seems like Microsoft though, or Xbox at the same time is doing good on those people beyond beyond whether you decide to buy their games or not. You know, which which is a you know is a just a good thing. Like I'm just glad that it's not only working out for us, uh, but it's also working out for the developers. Yeah, you know, like. Because you know, as as amazing it, as it is, and you know, saves us a lot of money. You just hope that you know, like that, everyone's winning, and it seems like it seems like that's the case, and that's what makes it. I feel like such a great service, and why, why, like I'm not afraid to tell someone that hey, if you if you really want to try this game, you know, and you're not sure it's something you would like, you know, like go play it on Game Pass. It's on there. Like, and if you do like it and it, it leaves, then you buy it. And, you know, like it, it's just such a good service. And it, it seems like it's so well, well done. And it was really well thought out when they, when they were, you know, creating that service. Yeah. So, yeah. I would I would like to see though like uh, PlayStation try to compete with them in that in that department too. But yeah, you know it is it is what it is. I mean, at least they've got something. I guess they've got some kind of offer that's you know similar to it. And they did you know they were doing it before Game Pass even existed. But mm-hmm. plus I I you know 
especially with like recent sales of the last of us part two, like, I Mm -hmm. mean, until Sony's stuff really ends, right? Like uh, until their sales numbers go down, they really don't have a reason to do it, to do it. Yeah. You know, because I mean, what I think seven of their seven of their major first party titles have sold over 10 million units. (laughs) So, I mean, I, I don't think that they need to do it. Uh, yeah so, i mean what is it spider-man horizon last of us uh remastered uncharted 4 uncharted lost legacy god of war days gone and i think there's one more that has sold over 10 million like that's that's insane you know that's just i wouldn't do it either <laughs> but i don't know i i hope that whatever these consoles decide to do in terms of pricing, at least like it's, I don't, I don't even really know what to say because it's just so hard to predict these things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it's hard to know what kind of like, I, I feel like it's easier in some ways to predict what, what Xbox is going to do mm-hmm. just because my, you know, like Phil Spencer has been pretty adamant about the fact that that like he's basically got all a lot of control of what what they decide on prices Mm -hmm. and you know i've been given the okay to go is you know go low Mm -hmm. if they need to um because you know that's the thing though is like ultimately it's the software that that's bringing bringing money into your 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 console and bringing more and more service and, and people coming onto it to buy more games. And so, you know, like you said, like with Microsoft's games, not, not getting as critically acclaimed as, as uh, Sony's like they've had to come up with some, you know, other ideas to try to bring people in and been doing a good job of it. And so, you know, like I, I would. I'll be honest. I'll be shocked if if Sony does kind of get afraid to go too low with with their prices. Mm-hmm. You know, like because yeah, I don't know. Like because it, like the right now the way things look, yes, they're ahead. They've sold so many more consoles, but I think if you if you you i don't know like there it could very easily make a big a big change you know like what we've seen with uh the ps3 where they they were so you know like a hundred dollars more or whatever and like that was a big enough deal that a lot of people just opted out Mm -hmm. you know at first so it's it's a crazy like (laughs) just a a crazy thing it's like yeah you don't know what kind of choice like the littlest choices like putting a camera in with the console (laughs) right could just like destroy everything it's right so like it's such a touch such a touchy thing yeah well so many people i mean the playstation 4 was supposed to come with the playstation camera for 500 bucks and then they saw how they reacted to microsoft's yeah and then they're like yeah it's uh, like microsoft took it for the team no <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes. we better not do that <laughs> <laughs> so anyways uh i just you know I'm, I'm excited for series x i can't wait for this july event although yeah <laughs> of course the week it's happening i'm going on vacation so um yeah, I want to say but, I've got something going on around that time too, but I, I don't think it's like a vacation or anything. It's yeah. like a well, I, I mean, a doctor's appointment or something. The night it happens, I mean, we, I don't, I don't know if you and Ed want to do something that the night it happens, but I'll be home in time to do Arsenal X that weekend for sure. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, we. What um well the twenty what so what day of the week is it on? Is it on a Friday? Or I think something? it's a Thursday. Thursday. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, not a hundred percent. Yeah, I'll look and I'll look and do it. Who knows? Like if it if it's like a, if I'm looking at the schedule of what's going on at work and stuff, I might 
I might see if it's like if it's something where I can uh, instead of going in at trying to go in at six o'clock at night, I'll go in like at nine yeah. <laughs> at night and try to do something earlier if if he's available. Yeah, if uh, Ed's available. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, I think that's I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, remember, you can catch Arsenal X on your podcast service of choice every Wednesday. Please like, subscribe, rate, and review. Give us a nice review. Give us those five stars on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast service you listen to us on. Uh, you can find all of our content on BossRushGames.com. Download our family of shows. Uh, a lot of cool things are happening. I'm excited for some of the 1v1s that are coming up. And, uh, you know, I think I think Ed's doing Cami Jace's tomorrow. So that'll be exciting. To, yeah. to have so um anyways jesse where can we find you you can find me almost everywhere is phantom nxs including uh twitch where i'm trying to stream when i can when i get some <laughs> free time sometimes it's only for like ends up being like maybe a half an hour because i end up <laughs> i end up having to go and do something uh some adult thing or something more important but I've I've been trying to stream, you know. And, uh, I finished, like I said, I, I finished uh, Condemned, and uh, just kind of trying to figure out what I want to play through next. So, yeah, uh, definitely come come watch if you. Uh, I've been trying to post on Twitter a link, uh, letting people know what I'm doing, what I'm playing, and that I'm going live. So if people want to stop by and say hi feel free <laughs> yeah uh you can find me at i am corian hd on twitter and instagram you can find me at corian hd on twitch you can also find all of our content and all of our shows on bossrushgames.com subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com slash bossrushgames and uh remember to to play games but be better just just be better <laughs> just yeah. be better so we're gonna throw out the x because we're exiting out. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.